coverage presents Speed World. Tonight, live from Indianapolis Raceway Park, it's the Hardy's Racing Series featuring the USAC Switzer Candy Sprint Car. Butler, a two-time USAC Sprint Car champion, starts alongside Mark Alderson. He says he's overdue on the pavement in row two this evening. A winner here three weeks ago, Greg Staub in 44. Kevin Huntley starts outside in 69. In the third go row. green, there is the green flag. Will it stick? Apparently it will into the first turn. Steve Butler, the two-time defending USAC Sprint Car champion. Some bumping bumper tag coming off the second corner. They begin to single file their way down the backstretch into turn three. But Butler says, hey, I think this is my night. There's Hewitt making his move already. These guys are hot tonight. They're really going for it. Hewitt rides that orange car as the shot of the car is coming down the main straightaway. Hewitt rides in third position. Hewitt can run this race as hard as he wants to because it's cooling off with that wind and his car is working so good, it's not using the tire hard and he knows how to run up top here. You know, he could be a surprise winner even though Steve Butler is on the pole. Well, Steve Butler, Butler is out in front. Mark Alderson, white engine, and they put the V6 in the same position. Unfortunately, it was too light in the front end. They had to move the V6 up. There's a look at Steve Butler out of Kokomo, Indiana, a computer expert when he's not driving race cars. That's right, he works for Delco. Troubleshooter. Troubles. They call in. Well, they call in and, and explain what the problem they're having. He goes to his computer. He goes through all his files in the computer, and he says, "Well, in the past we found this," and he fixes problems across the country from the past. Well, in the cockpit, he has no computer. It's all done with the brain and the right foot and the steering wheel. Right there is a look to the inside, and that is Bob. one driver has won two of these Tony Holman Classics, and that is Pancho Carter. He drove the pace car this evening. Poncho was victorious back in 1975 and again in 1979. We do have four past winners in the race. One is leading. In fact, Steve Butler won it one year ago on the dirt at the Terre Haute action track. Right now, they cannot lose sight of the leader. And the leader, Steve Butler, as we saw a couple of weeks ago, had the race very well in hand until he broke a wheel, had to go to the back of the pack, charge back to finish in the top three. Right now, he is where he wants to be, well out in front, and he is being pursued by the white 52 of Mark Alderson. It's going to be a telling story here. Uh, Butler, I'm sure, can get through the traffic easily. He's working extremely well tonight, and he's running up in the top groove tonight rather than running down the bottom because he has no traffic to pass. He'll get through traffic easily, open a little more gap up. Alderson should follow him through. But then we may see the traffic make a key role in, in uh, Fry's pass on Hewitt. Well, of course, these guys are relying on hand signals from the crew. It's very difficult to pick up a hand signal here. In fact, the only drive can turn down the backstretch. And there's a look at your leader again, Steve Butler. The Wait. Stoops Express number one still out in front. Uh, Steve, uh, Butler's, Steve Butler's having a, just a nice a yellow, yellow flag light. is out. Well, that will close the gap down as we look around the racetrack for what the problem is. also won from the pole position, but right now, the man that started from the pole, Mark Alderson, rides in second spot. This would be a big victory for Mark tonight. Oh, excellent victory. Green flag. 18 laps complete. And Bob Fry didn't make a move on the start that I thought he would. Right back there, drive right to the fire truck. It's a great speed shot, and you really get an idea how fast and close these cars are running on this 5 8 mile Indianapolis Raceway Park racetrack. Well, Butler, with 10 laps to go, has what would seem to be a comfortable margin. If you're a race driver with 10 laps to go, you have to be happy. Right. Well, we could have history made here this evening. Look out, Bob Fry got sideways up there going into three. Got a little pinch, what happened. Got As we pinch. started to say, we could have history made this evening the first back-to-back -back winner in the Holman Classic if Steve Butler can hang on. He leads it. With 22 laps complete, eight laps to go. He was the victor last year on the dirt, showing some versatility. This is his 10th time on pavement. And right now, in nine complete races, he's finished in the top three seven times. He finished fourth at Winchester for the last outing. That's why he the string. He finished the last seven times. And right now, we have seven cars in a seven-car draft. Yellow. Here we are, green again, Gary. The green flag flies. We are racing. We have... 22 laps complete, starting on lap 23. Let's see now if the restart can aid Bob Fry in the V6 Chevrolet number 20. Well, only way it'll, it'll, it'll aid him is if Jack tries to make a move like this on Alderson. Butler right now has this race in hand. Barring anything that's unforeseen that may happen, but, but 
He's still three abreast racing still. These guys, you know, they don't know what, what laps are left. But Kevin Hunt can ride back there in the fifth position. Sure. And Greg, oh, oh, a yellow flag out. Looks like Gene Lee hidden behind that Gene pole. Gene Lee in the black number three, the second time he's been up against the fence. ESPN, Brian Hammonds. Can Steve Butler hang on? Butler was motioning to his crew that his engine is going sick. We'll see what happens. We'll see if he can last three more laps. Gary? Thank you, Brian. We saw some indication from the cockpit. It was hard to pick up exactly what it was. And there is the pass right there for the lead. There goes oh, the what a heartbreaker for Steve Butler. But he's hanging on. Muscles his way off the corner and still has the lead. We're going to see some action here in the last lap because Mark knows that his engine's sick. He can hear it when he gets alongside him. He's going to try extra hard. But that also opens the door for Bob Price. Two laps to go. Kevin Huntley has just gotten around Jack Hewitt. He had, look at Huntley. Huntley's going to the high side of the V6 of Fry. Huntley in that white 69. Now, you said earlier that you thought there was an engine problem earlier in the evening in the heat race. There was. I heard the thing go sour. There goes Pup on the and outside. There goes Pup on the outside. He has third position. Here is the white flag. This is really going to be a one-lap shootout for the 18th annual Tony Holman Classic from Indianapolis Raceway Park. If he wins this race from, from the third spot in his last lap, I'll be flabbergasted. Well, he's running third right now. He tries the high side. Can't make it stick. Butler still has the lead. Alderson is second. Alderson will try the high side. And Butler slides up. Alderson comes low off the fourth corner. Who's going to win it side by side? They smoke the tires and Butler hangs on for the victory. That could have been uh, a, a little wheel banger there and all oh, heck would have broken loose. That could have been a situation where fourth or fifth could have won it. Yeah, but Butler in this one, uh, he must have had a fuel problem earlier and it, and it must have came back to him again because he ran good for a few laps in the heat race and the engine went sour. He still ran good, but the engine went sour. He's, well, he's, he's having a little excitement tires. there. He's showing off a little. He feels good. First time ever a driver has won back-to-back -back Holman Classics, and he's done it once on dirt and once on pavement. The first ever victory on pavement for the lad from Kokomo, Indiana, and this will be a long way, or will go a long way, in helping him take his third straight, third straight, third USAC straight. sprint car title. Yes. Only two drivers have won two or make that three sprint car titles. Larry Dixon, the late Sheldon Kinzer, but no one has ever won it three in a row. Three straight, that, and that's quite a feat to run it three straight. The Stoops Express, number one, it's a bright red car, and you can almost see the smile. One of the nicest things that's gonna happen to him is a tradition that's been happening from, the, from, from Don Smith and the mayor of Terre Haute right here tonight. Is here. They're going to present him with a beautiful Winchester rifle that, they, that the winners have been receiving for years. We were watching Kevin Huntley with a marvelous ride. Only his second race on pavement. He finishes third. But your winner right there in victory lane is Steve Butler. Mark Alderson had a, a run at it. He finishes second. Kevin Huntley was third. Bob Fry. We have a very, very happy winner in victory lane. There's a look right there at Steve Butler. He says he was overdue. He won it from the front row. We'll come back and talk to him. Stay with us. Not only has Steve Butler become the first driver to win back-to-back -back Holman Classics, he's only the third driver to lead every lap. Joe Saldana did it back in 73, Jan Opperman back in 76. Now let's go down for the Goodyear Winner Circle, brought to you by Goodyear Eagle Tires. Goodyear, because there really is a difference. Steve Butler, what was wrong with the, uh, with the engine the last couple of laps? You were signaling to your crew. I don't know, Brian. We've had a really uh, mysterious uh, miss for the last few races. We've changed motors, changed everything on the race car, and it's still there. It's just the gremlins in the car, I guess. But fortunately, we were able to hang in there. Right? I didn't know if we were going to make it that last two laps or not, so it was a real exciting finish for me and a little bit too exciting, really. You said earlier tonight your goal was to start up front and stay there rather than fall to the back of the field, and that's exactly what you did. Yeah, you know, the last two races we've been here, Brian, we've had to uh, take the Stoops Freightliner car back to the tail and come back up and... That's really not the way to go. We like it just riding out in the lead and having a good view of everything. So I'd like to, you know, thank my car owner, Jeff and Terry Stoops and Stoops Freightliner, and especially my mechanic, Phil Poor. He, he works uh, tirelessly on this thing, and nope, none of us could do it without him. So I'd like to thank everybody. What does it mean to you to become only the second man to win the Tony Holman Classic twice? You win Poncho Carter. <laughs> it's a, I'll tell you what, it's just a thrill to win this race on at IRP, Brian, because we've been so close a couple of times, and I've never run a, won a race on pavement before, so 
the uh, Tony Holman deal is just icing on the cake as far as I'm concerned. How do you like this pavement? I love it. I'm ready for more. All right, Jeff Stoops, the car owner, is also down here. What were your thoughts? Well, we've had a uh, tough three races down here. We've had to come from behind twice. And tonight, uh, when we had the yellow flag on the 19th lap, well, the last two races, we went to the tail on lap 19. So we, we felt confident if we could get out front, we could stay there. But the motor, like Steve said, the motor problem. So we're just happy. We're happy to be here. We like to thank the Switzer, Cherry Candy, and Hardy's people, and USAC and everybody here at IRP. We had a great night. Steve Butler and Jeff Stoops, a couple of happy guys down here in Victory Lane. Gary? Defending sprint car champion, leading the point standings again, going for a third straight USAC sprint car championship. And Steve Chassis, I would like to see this young man get a chance to move up in an IndyCar. Well, I would too. There's a lot of there's a lot of young guys that I think deserve a chance in an Indy car, but the problem is it's just far too expensive. Unless you have the monetary backing or a corporate sponsorship. It's just the days of coming from these cars, which teach you how to drive race cars, going to an Indianapolis car, gone. Last five laps, I said, it's now or never, and I really went after him. Uh, and uh, then on that last yellow, I noticed his engine did die a bit, and I was able to get under him going into one. And uh, it, it was a move that uh, uh, might have looked a little risky, but I learned it from Steve, and Steve's great at it. And so uh, he's a great racer, and he stayed right with me. And when it really came down to chips, we just ran there side by side with a couple of real professionals, and I really enjoyed it. Mark Alderson finishes in second place tonight. Gary. Well, of course, the race has been named after the late Tony Holman, and I don't think anyone has had a more major role in motorsports than he had buying the Indianapolis Motor Speedway back in 1945, totally refurbishing the uh, race plant opening for the first post-war race in 1946 and what advancement he made in motorsport what work he has done this race of course was named after him prior to that an impact the man has made and since 1972 71 this race has been named for tony holman immortalized the world's premier racing classic but also the man whose legend has been passed from the indianapolis 500 to the sprint car ranks tony holman's finest moment in indianapolis came in 1977 as he greeted longtime friend a.j foyt after his record setting fourth 500 victory sadly it also marked his final appearance at the famed brickyard but 80 miles southwest of indianapolis lies another of holman's pet projects the half mile terre haute action track there, drivers from across the country have battled wheel to wheel since 1971 in the prestigious Tony Holman Sprint Car Classic. Two years ago, 1980 Sprint Car Champion Rich Vogler was the class of the field, sometimes riding his mount on the outer limits of both the machine and the groove. But in 17 races, only Pancho Carter has claimed the classic more than once, receiving the accolades of fans and his father in 1975 and again in 1979. Throughout the years, names like Snyder, Bettenhausen, Opperman, Kenzer, Hewitt, Hood, and Schumann have all graced victory lane. And among those vying for a second classic title is defending champion Steve Butler. The Kokomo, Indiana native parlayed his win last year into the sprint car title and hopes to engrave his name in the record books tonight with a second straight Holman Classic crown. Steve had a big smile there, but there is the shot live right now from Indianapolis Raceway Park because Steve Butler has won it back to back last year on the dirt, this year on the pavement. Only the second driver to win two races. Holman Classic, the other being Poncho Carter, who drove the pace car this evening. More coming up. Stay with us. We were talking about this particular race here this evening. ESPN and Steve Butler with a fan out there. And the prestige of this race. You finished second in this event back in 1980, a bridesmaid. But how, why is this particular race so important in a driver's career? Always remember these races. And plus, he'll never forget this race because he has that beautiful Winchester rifle to hang over his mantle and look at, or use, whichever he, whichever he wants to. You know, Steve, we have a chance to travel around the country and, and talk to race fans, and the response to this racing series has been marvelous.